In an era where comfort alone isn't enough, we are truly blessed to sit atop technology-laden thrones. Our cyberpunk dreams have been realized. Luxury SUVs serve as a periscope to the future, showing us the way. I just want to make a note that I'm using the absolute very last vestiges of the battery in my phone to send you this information. The wireless charging pad in the X7 does not f***ing work. The only thing it does is make your phone extra hot and slows down the rate of discharge. I don't have a cable with me, and as a result, I'm going to run out of battery before I can make it home. Because technology is f***ing pointless. Watching Throttle House. I'm Thomas. And I'm James. And this is a Mercedes Benz GLS. And it has a phone charger that actually works. Okay, listen, it's not easy being rich. Uh, yes, it is. Okay, it is easy being rich, but what if you want to make sure that your life is even easier? What if you want to make sure that you're choosing the right $150,000 luxury SUV? Mercedes, BMW, Range Rover, all names synonymous with luxury, speed, and expense. The GLS, the X7, and the Range Rover. It's just called the Range Rover which we have today courtesy of Mark and the team at Bud's Land Rover. These three vehicles sit amongst the very top of their class, but there can only be one winner. It's time to put these V8 land yachts to the test. If you're new to Throttle House, we do car reviews, track tests, and quite a lot of messing around. <laughs> so subscribe and enjoy the show. Okay, luxury and performance. Yes. Where it meets is yep. where these three play because there are fancier versions of these. Yep. There's more powerful versions. There's a 63, there's yep. an Alpina XB7, there's an autobiography, yep. there's an SV autobiography. Which is scary because like, what's the average price of these three? 160-ish thousand Canadian. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot. It and goes for, up real quick. For that money, you are buying something you want to look very desirable. Um, so yeah. So the way, so, what do you? What's going on here? How do you <laughs> feel about this right now? I am annoyingly warming to it. Damn it! It's, I knew you were going to say that. First of all, I am too. It, it's Marina Bay blue metallic. Yeah. Which is really very pretty. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The black accents help. The grill, which we have originally said many times that it just. You know it's an X7 when it offends you. It's, I'm being less offended. Not offended by it anymore. Yeah. I'm less of a snowflake. Yeah, I don't want to cancel the grill anymore. No, no it's not getting cancelled. Uh, it looks weirdly good. It doesn't quite look as stealthy and villainous as a black That's out. just so sleek. Range it's Rover. so sleek. I think uh, still currently my favorite part of the new Range Rover is, we found this out in the last video, is that it doesn't have that little rubber lip along the side, like the sill goes straight back right, right. to the window. Yeah, right. And that and the, the, tail, the tail lights are invisible. On the, yeah, it just not disappears on. into blackness. These it's both have some awesome. serious tail light game. Yeah. Because this has also got very pretty tail yes. lights. And, yeah. and, but the, but the, the GLS has been facelifted. Yeah. And they've, they've tackled that. Wait, wait, that. what? Yeah. This is the facelift? Look, it doesn't look much. This is the press vehicle spec in white and it isn't, my favorite spec. It's really boring. This whole thing is yeah. really boring. So you're What's looking at a whole new grill here. So it's bigger. This is new? It's bigger. They just made it bigger. It's actually significantly bigger than the BMW at this point, I would say. It is weirdly big, yeah. And I, I don't quite like the way that this melts into no. the badge. It, it looks a bit like unfinished. No, this whole thing looks like a significantly less expensive vehicle than those. Well, see, this is the first thing you've got to take into account. Like, I don't, I don't know, it's just really dull. Here's what I would do if I was, I would lean into the Jurassic Park side of things. Make it a little wider, give it like a crazier kind of Defender style roof rack, make it army green, right? Just, <laughs> sorry. Just just like, you, you know, know make one. it make it really fun. Like these are obviously like 
we're cool, we're angry, and M, it, there's way too many M badges on that, Much by the too way. much M stuff. That's not the much M, too much M, all right? Stuff. That's not the M. Yeah, it isn't the M, yeah. No, these are all perfectly matched. Uh, the, the, what I will say, though, is that you have missed out, you know, in, in talking about this, you've mm -hmm. missed out on the fact that they have refreshed the tail lights. Oh, yeah. Go take a look. Go take, I'm going to go look. Instead of the cone that once existed on the back in, in that light, yeah. we now have three red squares. Look, it's not an L there's no fancy name, there's no life cycle impulse. But what I find <laughs> interesting is, is that the X7 is yeah. sort of the 7 Series as an SUV. Yeah. And the GLS is the S Class as an SUV. Yeah. Range Rover doesn't even have a sedan. And I, before today, I Googled to see, first of all, I tried AI. Yeah. And every time I did it, it just gave me a Range Rover. And I was like, no, but like a low sedan. And it just kept lowering the, the SUV. <laughs> and then I Googled it. People have tried to like make them out yeah, yeah, yeah. Jaguars and stuff. So yeah. I do wonder what a, a, a sedan Range Rover would look like. I don't think it would look like a Range Rover because the Range Rover is, it is what it is. It's that. It, is it that. can't be any more or less than that. It's just yeah. a Range Rover. Today, what do you yeah. think about my condensation? By the way, I, I brought this. It. I brought I, this for you. I think that is the bravest condensation I've ever seen. Yeah. I don't even know how it got in there. There's barely any room for it. It's the tiniest light and the most condensation. The the, the condensation to light ratio is pretty yeah. bad on this. Anyway. All right. So presence. Yeah. In Pre the in these in these specs only. Range BMW. Range BMW. Yeah, for sure. Like right. that. Like this is just so cool looking. Okay. This is like you know intense, but I would just. That's the one for me. But the reason you've spent this money, yeah, and you because a Kia Telluride looks cool. The reason you've spent this money is you sure. want next level insulation, yes, power, ride, performance, comfort, all the things. We're going to test all those today. We Sci are scientifically with real science. Um, what do we want to start with? Let's go. Yeah, let's, let's go. go. BMW. All right, I'm going to sit in the back with the instruments. With the instruments. All right, let the testing begin. Fast. It makes quite a fuss of it though, you know. <laughs> that is 4.72. That's to 100. 4.48 to 4. 60. 4.4 to 60. That is just ridiculous. For the, for the non M thing, for the non M, BMW, they can't do normal anymore. Oh. All right, before we get to the rest of the metric testing, this has quite the engine. It does. These, so these all have twin turbocharged V8s. Yeah. This is the most monstrous because even though it shares the 523 horsepower number with the Range Rover, this is actually a detuned version of the new M V8 engine, the S68. Yep. So it's a mild hybrid. Which I really like about it. Because yeah, you've been living with it, haven't you? I've been living with it and, and this has the smoothest start stop I've ever used to the point where I didn't even think I had it on. I want to try it. You come to a stop and in comfort mode and it just completely shuts off before you notice. Did you feel anything? Nothing. And Isn't I just, that I, crazy? Yeah, and I watched it go into the battery part there. Yeah. The only thing that ruins that is the brake calibrations. Crap. For some reason, it feels like it comes on in weird chunks. Yeah. And then it kind of vibrates at low speed. I don't know why, but other than that, this is a ridiculously smooth experience in a straight line. And oh. it is so powerful. It's quick. It lifts the front up under throttle in the most dramatic way. And so the XB7 did that as well, yeah. the Alpina. Yeah. They like that. They like that muscle car vibe. Yeah. Okay. I'm not sure I like that muscle car vibe in this. I kind of, you know, the whole thing is feels so like hunkered down and strong. This has got active anti-roll bars, right? So in the corners like this, it's it's really, really well controlled in sport mode. In comfort mode, I find that it pogo's around in its suspension to a ridiculous degree. This is sport. And I don't really feel that confident, but sport mode is fine. Yeah, that drives like a BMW. It drives like a, it drives so much smaller than it is. Oh yeah. They've done such a good job with that. That is helped by the rear wheel steering, which is quite aggressive actually. Okay, okay. Let's, let's, okay. let's do okay. some science. Let's uh, science this. Uh, so you want some science? Okay, I have a decibel meter. All right, we're gonna do this the same in each car. We use the same piece of road, we're going to stay in comfort mode, and we're going to go the same speed. Here we go. Oh, that was a lot of pressure as the driver there. How did we do? 59.9. 59.9. Yeah. Okay. 
Should we do the next test? I'm quite excited for the next test. Okay, me too. For the ride test. It's not the same as last time, right? Where you drew, drew a very derogatory version of me. Yes, it was Stewie. Um, no, this man has many things inside of his body that need to be removed, and I'm here to the rescue. Um, same road. Same road. Same driver. Let's see how many buzzes I get per car. Starting with the X7. I'm gonna do the same thing. There's an elastic in his leg for some reason. I'm not sure what that's about. He appears to have a... Oh, uh, buzz, uh, a bit, bit of side-to-side... -side oh, a bit of side-to-side -side jostling happening. Come on, active anti-roll bars. I'm in comfort mode. Right, do your thing. Come on, come on, come on. Oh, this is critical. Hold oh, smooth. I'm so good at this. I am so good but at you this. You already buzzed. No, but I buzzed once, but it was just a minor one. It was just like a... What are you working uh, on? Now? Uh, I'm hearing buzzes. This is pretty smooth, I will say. I'm pretty impressed. And okay, no, careful. The last one, for some reason, he has a toilet in his stomach. Okay. You know what? I'm pretty impressed. How many did you do? Well, I've, I've got these five out, and uh, yeah. How many buzzes? A couple. Couple. Not too many. We'll have a buzz counter up for you. Um, this is this is actually impressively smooth. Yeah, it's nice. It's nice. They've done a good job there. They have done a good job with this car. A few things need some uh, polishing off, but uh, let's see how it compares to the Range Rover. Okay, Range Rover. Here we go. Huh. Feel the front lifting almost clean off the ground, I swear. 4.6 to 60. That's pretty quick. That is basically almost the same. As near as makes no difference, but you know what? It doesn't feel the same. It felt slower. Well, but it was it, a tenth slower. But it was so smooth. You're just you're just so programmed. Yeah, it was very smooth. That's just what it just it just erased the speed. That is impressive actually. Because I lo I thought that was gonna be a full second slower. Yeah, wow. no, that was good. That That's was good. cool. That felt quick. So this has the M50 engine, the thing that the right. X7 M50 used to have. Exactly. So it is a 4.4 litre V8, twin yep. turbocharged, but it doesn't benefit from a mild hybrid system. No. However, as you can tell from that 0 to 60 time, what gives? Who, who, who cares? cares? <laughs> yeah. The start stop may not be as smooth, no. but otherwise. It's a very smooth engine and it's a lot more insulated. The car though, isn't. So before we actually test the, the, the sound uh, level on the same piece of road, I want to point out that as a passenger, I was more comfortable in the X7. Wow. There's like creaks and there's wind noise and I can hear the road more. Um, I'm high up here. I feel yeah. very high up. Well, that's okay. You're, you're, you're in a Range Rover. It's supposed to be kind of off-roady, right? That's its whole thing. And you're supposed to look down but on What people. is that noise? It's the, it's the rear deck. It's so annoying. Stop. Shut up. It's interesting being back in this because I've lived with multiple versions of this. I think the last one we had was a first edition, so it had even fancier stuff going on. This yep. is this is the base in a sense, this SE, the P530. It doesn't feel base when you're in it though. I feel expensive. It feels very expensive. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's that's a big difference is you feel you feel rich when you get in. You do, except for all the stuff flying around everywhere and making clicking noises. This car makes a lot of noises we've found just throughout the day. Moving it around, there's like fans and things what's, and stuff. What's sliding? I don't know. It's this stupid rear deck thing. I don't understand how it works. What is this thing? It's stupid. <sighs> No, I think it's really, really nice in here. There's there's a, a way that everything is calibrated together. Not one thing is particularly that much better than the BMW, but I think that as a whole package, the whole thing feels smoother. But notably, the, the time that I live with it, yep. between the rear steer and the way it sort of doesn't like cr cracks in the road in Toronto, yep. My passengers felt sick every single time and they demanded to go in the Sentry instead. And I'm not plugging the Sentry, but you can feel sick in the Range Rover. Uh, so far, uh, I'm actually feeling a little bit nicer in this than I was in the X7. Okay, well, we'll see how that is in a few minutes. Because first, we must see if it's actually insulated more than the BMW. All right, here we go. Same piece of road, same speed, same guy holding the thingy. Comfort mode.
Okay, so interesting. There's the same bump we went over in the X7. That spiked this to 61. In this? In this. But it didn't. So the, so the bump was more rickety and crickety. And I told made you the Range Rover doesn't like the impacts. Interesting. But I otherwise, it was, as near as makes no difference, exactly the same cruising volume. Oh, okay. All right, time to save my man here that has a toilet in his leg. All right, Cavity Sam. Cavity Sam. I'm coming to That's the rescue. His name. That's his name. Okay, here we go. First, the elastic band has been extracted. Nice. Ooh. This feels better. Immediately, I am doing this so much yeah, quicker. From the driver's seat, it immediately is not, hasn't got that same level of side to side. No problem, I haven't even buzzed yet. And the side to side wasn't that bad in the X7, but this is just... Done. Just cruise. And I'm on the last one, I haven't even buzzed. It's a toilet, and I'm gonna rotate the toilet and get it out. Oh my God, not one buzz. This is so much smoother. That's there crazy. Okay, that's interesting. Interesting. I am currently team Range Rover. Well, you haven't tried the GLS yet, and it's true. quick disclaimer, mm -hmm. we, a few weeks ago in California, had a GLS, the new GLS 63. It was excellent. But we didn't film it, but we did fall in love with it. It was really, really good. So actually. does the lesser GLS 580 come even close? Let's find out. All right, 4.48 to beat. Here we go. Yeah, this is the lowest horsepower of the bunch. Oh, oh right. First gear is very aggressive. Yeah, that was quick. That was quite a fair bit of uh, drama there, actually. I'm pretty impressed. You ready? What did we do? So both of us in the car. Yeah. 4.92. And Mercedes claimed 4.9 with this. I, that's not bad. That's about what I that's expected. Really yeah. No, shut up, Mercedes. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> so. This has 510 horsepower, which is a jump with the facelift. Actually yeah. quite a significant jump. And it was also a mild hybrid. Although it doesn't have the same seamless start-stop. To the point where I've been living with this and I, yeah. turned, I turned it off. Oh, you turned it <laughs> I off? I was getting fed up with it. Oh, interesting, yeah. okay. Also that, because the way it, it blends in with the nine-speed transmission, I found sometimes I was like dropping back on hills or in car parks, it would carry on forward, even though it's a torque converter. So, hmm. yeah, the trans yeah, the transmission's otherwise very smooth. So, so, so far of the bunch, the Germans are the ones that have not calibrated the uh, drivetrains for smoothness as well as the, the Brit. Interesting. I like that. Yeah. I like that. that does mean you, that, Britain. That means that the X7 is a more exciting, it's the more BMW flavored car. The chassis is. is moving a bit more. It's communicating and yes. it's, it's, it's energetic. There's an energy to it. 100% there is. Getting, this is very smooth yeah, already. But getting out of the range into this immediately, this feels so much more car-like. <sighs> Interesting that you say that yeah. because I feel a little bit car-like in here. Just uh, not necessarily in the in terms of the insulation, it's just the way that I'm sitting in this seat. Yeah. I feel a little bit more like I'm in, you know, the back of an E-Class. So, yeah, if you, at the Range Rover, if you want to feel high up, it's the most SUV feeling of the bunch. Yeah, I like to be high up when I drive. Yes, <laughs> the X7 is sort of similar to this. They're both a lot more car-like. Yeah. And I, I like that. I like feeling a bit more dynamic, a bit more maneuverable. No, you know. fair enough. I don't. See, we live in different parts of Ontario. You yeah. live in a, in a space where maneuverability and quick movements are really important. I live, live in, in an area that's like very like American-like, with big, yeah. long roads, everything's very easy. I just want a big, squishy, smooth thing. You could be in an F650. That would do you, that would do you just fine. That ride in that was, was worse than the worst sports car I've ever been in. <laughs> But what, what, that's all worthless. If inside the car is just a cacophony of sound, a lack of insulation. Let's find out. Okay, here we go. Here, here we, go. we go. Wait for it. Sixty-two point one was the highest we hit. Ooh. Okay. Okay. It was 59 before the bump, but one right over top. Okay, here's the truth. With this not being the most precision instrument that has ever existed, yeah. as near as makes no difference, they're all about the they're, same. They're all the same. Yeah. They are all the same. Yeah. You are not losing out. 
You're no. not, you're not going to have trouble having a phone call in And I'm not going to lose a patient on the table. <laughs> so let's, cavity Sam. Let's save cavity Sam. All right. I haven't had time to go to the hospital. Perfect. We're going to operate him en route. Ooh, this is already oh, okay. Yeah, so... Oh, that's a buzz. This doesn't have... Interesting. ...the optional E-Active No, it does not, control. and I think that that would definitely help. Okay, it did that one pretty easily. Yeah. Oh. I can feel, especially getting out of the Range Rover, this isn't quite up to... No, now the difficult one is the... Yeah. Ah, the toilet. I've already buzzed. Ah, I buzzed again. You've always found the toilet difficult. Uh, <sighs> so, E-Active Ride Control... Oh, no. ...is this a $9,000 is... option. And I think it's a $9,000 you should spend so not, only, not only did you do it, <laughs> it's up to God now. <laughs> the the, the MyVac GLS, so if you get that E-Active body control, not only does it sense the road and do all the extra things to make it smooth, yep. you can look like an idiot and bounce up and down. You can. <laughs> I think that that's probably the reason that you get it primarily. But Mercedes but, underplay it on the build site. It's at the bottom of the page. It doesn't really explain it very well. Explain what it is or why. Who's going to thousand dollars? Yeah, you're not going to spend nine grand, but it, it transforms it. This yeah. has air suspension standard, and it is good. But in the context of what we just did, I felt the difference as well. The um, Range Rover, no question, yeah. is the smoothest car here. It's also like the sickest. Do you know what I mean? I just know that Sam's going to be suing Mercedes <laughs> right and the hospital. Sure. Yeah, especially if we're if we were in America. All right, before we do this, yeah. quick recap on the way they drive, just to conclude. Okay, Range Rover, smoothest, most SUV-like of the bunch. Yes. X7. Yep. S almost as SUV-ish, sportiest. Sportiest. GLS, most car-like. Most car-like. But really? not quite as luxurious as the Range Rover, not as sporty as the X7. Well, maybe it makes it up in the interior, because after all, GLS, GLS class. S stands for GLE. Yeah, so because we, that's what this is. It's very much an extended GLE. Yeah. Um, it is very nice in here, and this is premiering the new Bahia leather. The this what? Bahia leather. Are you saying that right? It's a, it's a foreign word. Okay. It actually means um, the curvature in a bay, or like a bay. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like a coastline. Okay, um, looks like a rhino's bum. It, yeah, it, it, it sort of ages the interior a bit. It makes it look no. like an old Merc. It does. Which maybe, if you like, is good. However, Mercedes has, you know, got so much better over the years. This is a solid feeling interior. The Burmester sound system is very good. This is the new M Bucks. This reminds me of friends, this entire interior, especially these seats, remind me of like friends that I had whose dads were really into golf and their whole basement was done up in like golf themed things. And that, that's what this is and that's what this is. That's fair. Yeah. I, yeah, I don't think this has a grandeur that matches the other two now. No. Considering this is the most recently facelifted one, yep. this feels the oldest. Yeah, it does. It, it, it's still very nice though. The materials are all like, you know, they're, they're good. They're not amazing, but there's still a few creaks here and there. Yeah, we've got heated and cool cup holders. We've got wireless charger. Yeah. Uh, the, this is very easy to get on with. You just press home if you want to go to the Mercedes stuff, which is yeah. very smooth. Nice and um, easy. And then the gauge cluster is lovely. It faces you directly pretty much, which is not something I can say for the BMW. We'll get to that yeah, in a we'll second. Yeah, we'll get to that in a second. Uh, and then this is the new steering wheel for the for the this year. I kind of like the new steering wheel. I didn't like it at first. It feels weird in your hands, but it looks so awesome. Yes, <laughs> yeah. It's comfortable. Were you comfortable in the back? I was fine in the back. It, it was more like a car. This, well, this doesn't That's have, the conclusion. This doesn't have the captain's chairs. So this is like a GLE, which is like an E-Class, which is well, similar no. to the C-Class. It's basically a comp. It's an A-Class. This gets a three row. Yeah. This gets a third row. <laughs> it does, yeah. And I sat in it, and it is comfortable. I have about an inch yeah. and a half knee room. I have about two inches headroom, and I'm 5'10 on a good day. So It's nice. Can we look at the X7 now? Because yeah. there's actually some incredibly serious improvements to BMW stuff. Okay, let's go. It is fancy in here. It's not bad, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is, these seats are almost like Alpina looking. Yeah, 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 you have to pay for that. Oh. Yeah, it's like it's about $7,000 Canadian. Is that, this is what this BMW individual is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like a merino white and something leather. It's like incredibly expensive. It's like the most expensive leather option you can get. God, BMW do not mess around with their build quality. No, 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 it's all very nice. It's so tight. The leathers, I think, are a higher quality than the Mercedes. They, I, everything I agree. feels more expensive, I agree. right? And the carbon fiber here is, is lovely. Like really compared nice. to piano black. Why do so many people do piano Heated black? Heated and cooled cup holders. All right, well, the GLS has that. It does have that, you to be Also, fair. the GLS has that, I forgot what? to mention. What? You can now option the GLS with the black, stripy piano lacquered wood that you could only previously get in the Maybach. 
Oh, really? Yeah. Well, what's the point? But that's the fun about, you know you're in a Maybach when you get the black stripey yeah, piano leather you. wood thing. You don't get that. Okay, so here's what's going on right now. <laughs> okay, yeah. You I'm ready? Like, I'm ready. First of all, this gauge cluster, it's not, it doesn't even get to be called a gauge cluster anymore. This stretched screen is tacked onto this dashboard at the dumbest angle I have ever seen ever in a car nice. because it goes away from me, which means that at, on either side of the steering wheel, it's a different distance. So like, like it's like that, right? Which means that when you're driving straight, it feels like you're, you should either be moved this way or your steering wheel isn't perfectly straight. And, and that you haven't got used to that? No, it bothers me. It bothers you. But what doesn't bother me is that finally, after all this time, BMW has actually listened to our complaints about how complicated iDrive had got. 10 bucks says they haven't listened to us at all. They have because- But they've decided on their own. I want, let me think that we have affected <laughs> go things. On, show me I have going. affected change, James. Okay, now everything is along the bottom. We don't have a ridiculous climate control screen anymore. So, you remember before you click on the climate control screen and it would just be the most, yeah, you, like, you had to be a pilot. It was insane. But you have, so CarPlay's still clean. CarPlay's okay, there, but this nice. is now all along the bottom always. Right. Right? So, temperature's right there, and I just clicked that, and there's my heated steering wheel thing. It's that simple. And now watch, we'll look at the climate control. I click on that. Ooh. Super simple. Auto, there it is. Fan, auto. If I actually want to change where the vents go, I click on that and then I can manually adjust them, but just... Would you prefer buttons or you've got so used to that easy. now? I've got used to that. That yeah. has not been an issue. Also, I just leave it on auto. Yeah. The only thing that I miss is is literally a hard button for a heated seat and heated steering wheel, but it's it's right there. I can't complain that much, honestly. It's okay. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know, that's a huge improvement, I think. It's, you know what it's nicer than? It's nicer than the BMW XM interior. It Even, is significantly. There's, there's more flair. There is more flair. It's and got this little You're a hundred right. grand cheaper. That's so silly to me. If they were the same price, which one would you get? If they were the same price, I, yeah, I would get this one. You'd still get this? Yeah. Even if, yeah. A hundred percent I would get this one. I would get, yeah, would, there's no question. This is a better vehicle than yeah. that. I also tested the back seat in this, the, wrist, the third row. I wonder if in the XM the wireless charger works. Because it really, really does not work. I think I think it's, yeah, wireless charger is autocorrect. Did you mean campfire for your phone? It is just so stupid. And like, what was the car we were in recently that cooled that area down there? Oh. There, it was a really good idea. It was something, I can't remember what it was. Was it the Cayenne? I think it was the new Cayenne. Maybe it was the new Cayenne. Yeah. Yeah, that is clever because in like two seconds, my phone well, got the problem too is hot. You were running multiple apps. Oh, you mean the apps that I need to navigate where I'm going? Like Waze and you know Spotify maybe if, like God forbid I want to listen to some music. No, you can't. You can't. It's so uh, stupid. I, I did test. So this is a captain seat configuration compared to the uh, yeah. the one in the bench and the S. But this uh, I tested the rear seats in this. Yeah. They are almost as as spacious. Almost. Okay. I could I could do a four hour journey no problem in both of them. Interesting. But this all makes you wonder. I th I, there's a lot of good stuff going on here. Yeah. But for the same price. Do you go for the Rolls Royce of $160,000 SUVs? The Range Rover. Let's find out. <laughs> okay, I say the Rolls Royce of this price SUVs because... This is so much classier feeling. It's much more minimalist, isn't it? I, it's not even the minimalism. It's just there's something about the materials. <laughs> I'm so glad you said minimalism. I was trying to get you to say it. Something about it just is so condescending when you say it. It's Wait, not even I about said, the minimalism. It's not about the minimalism. <laughs> Listen, it's not all about milk, okay? Yeah. It is. It's more to it than that. It is, it's the it's the materials. It's the visual design. It's the it's, it's the like how a, you it's like sit. It's a smell. There is a smell. It's like it's like richness. I'm moneyed. Yeah. <laughs> It's like diving into this is like diving into your pile of coins. You're Scrooge McDuck when you jump a into one really of these. A really comfortable pile of coins. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think these seats are the most comfortable of the three. They're definitely the most followed comfortable. Followed by those in the 7 Series, followed by the GLS. I think that sounds, yeah. yeah Not to say the GLS is uncomfortable, but this is just two notches above. And this this is super easy to get on with, right? Well, we've played with this in the Defender yeah. and the Range yeah. Rovers, yeah. It's got all the stuff. It, it, it hasn't <laughs> it's stopped got working. All the stuff. It hasn't stopped working. Yeah. I can lock my diffs right there, right? It's got a nice little click to it, right? There's yeah, this is the play. same sort of jag thing. You pull for the fan, you push in for the heated seats. Yeah, it's very easy to use. Simple gauge cluster. Clean. Little flap down Elegant. there. Elegant, and it's actually a 
gauge cluster. What do you mean? What do you mean? It's a it's screen. Act- no, but it's not. But it's got a cluster thingy. Well, it's not obfuscated in the uh, obscurity. Yes, you can't just always use that word because you learned it last week. Even okay? though, even though the GLS comes up outside, the, he talks about it all the time. The bezel comes up, but the actual Favorite information word. in the screen is all under the wheel. So yeah, no, I know, but it is still very much a gauge cluster look of a thing. Yes, steering wheel, beautiful. I, I, like I, the piano black even works in here. Yes, it's going to get scratched and dirty, it but there's is, other options. It is scratched and dirty. It is already scratched and dirty. I, I got in this this morning wearing my black gloves, and I yeah. was ready to pull off an, a very highbrow heist. Yeah, 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 100% highbrow it has heist. That, it has a vibe. Or you're going to hunt down James Bond. Or I'm going like, to hunt it down. Those are the options. Yeah, no. This isn't even as nice as these get, and this is so nice. I love uh, it. You've got the autobiography, then you've got the SV, yep. which we haven't tested yet. So yep. make, next year, maybe we'll play with that. It, the yeah. problem is, is that being a Land Rover product, I assume everything will break at some point. It's like not fair. these, these are powered. What do you mean it's not fair? It's not fair to assume that it hasn't happened to us yet. But it's happened in other cars like this. <laughs> <laughs> On many occasions. No, but you're right. This car has been absolutely flawless, flawless all day. Flawless. So I don't know what to do here because this is an interesting one. This is obviously advantages and disadvantages to each of them. But let's say I was going to, as you say, ball out for the rest of my life in one of these three. Yeah. I think it's th- I think it's this one. This this is the one. Yeah. I think I'd take this one. Yeah. You drive away and you feel like you got your money's worth more yeah. than the others. So there we have it. The Range Rover is the one that if you drive away from the dealer, you're gonna feel like you've. Like you, like if you drive away from the dealer, you... hmm. okay, yeah, the Range Rover broke down at the end of our filming day, so maybe we go with the next choice. Despite being the most exciting to drive and having a glorious interior, it's not the X7 because that melts your phone. The GLS then. It didn't break down and it didn't let the phone die, but it... oh, okay, yeah. So the whole center console got so hot when I road tripped it the next day that it could melt chocolate in 30 seconds. Right then, we haven't tried it, but the winner of this test is the Audi SQ7. Thanks for watching. You are inside one of our new end screens. Pretty crazy, right? This one is devoted to Throttle Clubhouse. You can join, we have a Discord. It's like a club. People are meeting up, doing car meets, we're sim racing. It's pretty fun. Are you winning the sim races? No, no, no. I'm very bad at it. Yeah. Thomas is bad. Yeah. Come, come beat Thomas. Yeah.